Why will most preppers die after SHDF? Let's talk about it. Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So many prepping channels have talked about this particular topic before and I figured I would throw my bid in the hat today. I've been reading a book by an author called Jack Hunt. It's a book called the Survival Series and there's uh, rules of survival, rules of conflict, rules of engagement. It's a many part series of books. Excellent book, I would strongly recommend it. To this day, that is probably the most realistic depiction of an electromagnetic pulse induced collapse that I have seen to date. Many works of fiction and non-fiction seem to speculate that 90% of people are just gonna immediately collapse after the collapse. Which of course is not true. And this book lays it out in a timeline which I think is far more realistic. So go and check out that book. I'll post a link in the description. But this book got me to thinking about what is going to get preppers dead in an SHTF situation. What is it that makes a prepper a prepper? Well, for one, it's the desire to be self-reliant. Emphasis on self. Notice that it's not community reliant or socially reliant, it's self-reliance. They wanna be independent. We wanna be independent. And as such, this is at odds with building a community. This is at odds with trusting others. A lot of preppers tend to be introverted or isolationist, which of course is not conducive to long-term survival, no matter how you slice it. Now, within this book I was reading, there was this prepper who has grown very cynical and he begrudges the community he keeps to himself. And when the proverbial shit finally does hit the fan, he retreats into his domain with his preps. And the rest of his family thinks he's nuts up until that point. And even after that point, uh, he's driven such a wedge between him and his family because he's been so militant about his preparedness his entire life that they've grown to resent him. His sons have grown to resent him and the community at large has thought him to be a kook up until now, of course, when they're looking for his help. The problem is, of course, is that now, uh, as he's kind of isolated himself, he's become a target. He, of course, has become a subject of fixation of those who are now in need of assistance post-collapse. And a lot of preppers will just say, well, you know, if anybody comes and tries to get stuff from me, you know, they're gonna be on the other end of a barrel. The problem with that is, is that you can only go on so long with that. I mean, eventually you would be overtaken, you would be overthrown. And I'm in the same boat here. I'm a very introverted person. I don't like groups. I think that people's IQ in groups, and it's proven actually, the herd mentality, group think, mob mentality, people's IQ diminishes significantly when they find themselves in a group. My IQ diminishes when I'm in a group. I've been in many mosh pits in my life, so trust me, I know how easy it is to <laughs> go into a primitive way of behaving uh, just in the presence of others. And you would be surprised if you've never been in a mob before, how quickly that can overtake you, how quickly that herd mentality just takes over. So as preppers, of course, we are repulsed by this. As individuals, people can be very intelligent. And a group of four or five people, you know, I can handle that. Anything above and beyond that, IQ diminishes, and that's why you need laws. You need rules to govern the interactions of people, and those rules need to be strictly enforced. Because if they aren't, people just end up doing stupid things. And politics comes into play, and you know, call me socially cynical, but that's just my experience with things. So unless there's a really strict set of rules that everybody adheres to, uh, people tend to deviate socially in ways which were counterproductive to the main goals of the group. And in order to keep things together, at least for the first little while, you do need some form of rectatorship in a way. You, de you do need a set of agreed upon norms, values, rules, goals that you are going to try to achieve and everybody needs to be on the same page with that. 
Now, I don't have a prepping community. I personally do find it very hard to trust people along those lines. I do, however, have contingency plans for if the crap ever does hit the fan, I know that people are going to be coming to me and looking to me, perhaps for direction, hopefully, and not just for a handout. And if that happens, I will have a strategy in place to execute because I know full well that I'm not going to be able to ride something like that out by myself. Uh, fiction or not, any fictional account of the post-apocalypse ultimately ends up as people in communities and the stragglers are the ones that are trying to get into those communities. The benefits of having a group are numerous, whether it's skills, safety in numbers, uh, just a sense of camaraderie, you know, just not being alone. Nobody wants to just be alone. But a lot of preppers are jaded about people and for good reason. So in order for me to want to fully commit myself to a preparedness group at this stage of the game, I would have to have some sort of executive role. Not necessarily the, the all-out leader, but I would have to have some executive role and not one which would afford me any privileges that were above and beyond anybody else, but just that I would have to be actively involved or I'd want to be actively involved in the decision-making process. Now that's just me. There are a lot of people out there who would be perfectly happy uh, taking orders or just not necessarily taking orders but following the law and not making any of those executive decisions. I would not feel comfortable with that because one of the main reasons why I'm a prepper in the first place is because I'm very independent in my thoughts, as are all preppers. We don't like being told what to do by other people and with that comes a distrust of authority. And for good reason, there's many reasons to be very critical of authority because time and time again and as evidenced in some of the laws and regulations that we have that make absolutely no sense whatsoever but they're there that's why I'm skeptical of authority now I'm not saying that government itself or authority in itself is a bad thing I'm saying that power tends to corrupt I choose not to fully submit and give my full allegiance to any religion or political party or whatever the case may be. I'm a free thinker. I like to think for myself in the purest sense that that's achievable. And this is why I will die after shit hits the fan. Because I find it very hard to trust people. Now we're not gonna get into the psychoanalysis of why preppers don't trust people and how that's related to their upbringings. We're gonna save that for a future video that's coming up next week. You guys are really gonna enjoy that one. And you know, I, I occasionally get people who come on here and they go on these little rants about, oh, you think you're arrogant and all this. That's because they're not in my brain. You know, they don't understand that I'm very self-critical, that I'm very self-aware, that I, I frequently and routinely am reassessing my thought process on certain things and I scrutinize myself. And that's one of the ways that you can prevent yourself from being the crazy disgruntled prepper is by basically, you know, self-monitoring. You know, going over things a bit and questioning yourself, questioning your belief system every once in a while so that you don't, you know, go too far in one di direction and ostracize yourself from the group entirely. And that's why I still do live my life. So when the shit hits the fan, this is why you need to have a game plan for your neighbors, for your extended family. Because if we're talking about long term collapse the only way any of us are going to survive that is the way we've survived for thousands of years and that's as a group as a tribe you can't do it alone and I know this and it's a constant struggle and just because a person's a prepper doesn't mean that I'm necessarily going to agree with those people about a lot of things maybe there's going to be some common ground there which will act as a as a social glue to promote some social cohesion. Just like your co-workers, for instance, you both work at the same place, but maybe you don't want to be around them for the other 16 hours a day, or at least some of them. So the same thing would be the case with preppers. Just because you're a prepper doesn't mean we're going to ultimately be best friends right away. There may be actually many personality conflicts 
which are even more pronounced because of our desire to be independent. Now in this book, in spite of the fact that the prepping character was right, and he's got these cocky kids who resent him because, you know, he put them through this gamut of preparedness training when they were kids and he was pretty harsh, you know, something that I personally don't do with my kids anyways. Uh, you know, they're gonna learn the basics, if only by watching me do stuff, but uh, it's nothing I'm necessarily forcing on them. I'm not training them to be prepping black belts or anything that extreme, but you know, they're gonna pick up some basic skills here and there. But I don't wanna end up as the isolated, shut-in recluse of an old man who's only focused on himself. Because preparedness, going back to that idea of self-reliance, is a very selfish act. You gotta look out for number one. That's the, the key philosophy, which is a philosophy I totally agree with. And when things come down to the wire, everybody looks out for number one. It's just, you know, the law of the jungle. But that doesn't mean that you can't help out your community. You can't help out your extended family. And that's why I think if you're really serious, once you've got yourself squared away and you're thinking about, well, what do I do next as a prepper now that, you know, I'm squared away for six months to a year or whatever. Well, I think the next step is to make a strategy, make a game plan for your neighbors, for your extended family, for those people who are going to come knocking on your door. You're not going to be able to just isolate yourself from the community. You can't stay up 24 seven. You got to sleep sometime. You know, trust is like the mortar of civilization. If you don't trust anyone, then you can't have an army. An army requires subordinates. It requires ranks. It requires people who are going to follow orders and people who are above you in the ranks as well. And you need to have trust and have faith in other people's judgment. Survival is a selfish thing. Thriving thereafter is a communal thing. And a lot of people don't like that word community in the preposphere, but that's the natural evolution of this art form, if you want to call it one, is a greater focus on community and how you would actually rebuild civilization thereafter. Now, all that said, it's equally important that you go and you live your life and you enjoy every moment to the fullest because there's a good chance that you know shit won't hit the fan anytime soon it could it absolutely could <laughs> definitely could but it may not so you know you don't want to throw all your eggs in this basket for me it's a little different because i now have a store and my life is starting to be built around this but that doesn't mean i spend every single day you know, anticipating and dreading the collapse or anything like that or fantasizing about it. And I've said this before, every other book or documentary or skill that I learn, you know, it makes me uh, hope that it never happens more and more. The task of surviving something like that seems more and more insurmountable the deeper and deeper you get into preparedness because you realize how much it would truly suck. And most people with their brand new bug out bags, first day, they might feel all right about the situation. Second day, they got this. Third day, okay, this is starting to, this is starting to kind of wear on me now. Fourth day, man, I need a hot shower. I want a nice hot meal. I want to sit on the couch and watch TV. You know, nobody wants Mad Max. Nobody wants Mad Max. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section. What are you doing? to address this issue. Are you a person who is introverted and you just prep for yourself and your own family? Or do you have a plan for your community and your extended family? Let me know. Thanks for watching, Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com. We've totally revised our website. We only deal with quality products at the best prices and all of my subscribers get a VIP discount of 10% off the entire store. Use discount code SURVIVALPREPPER for 10% off. Don't forget the strong survive and the prepared thrive. See you next time.